They'd lived here for 10 years already. So they had their daughter in this house, but they always kind of knew it long term they weren't gonna be able to live the way that it was because it was very small. It was a classic bungalow with the two bedrooms at the back and they bought it with the intention thinking eventually they might do something. They had their daughter and you know, lifestyles changing, frequently they work from home. There just wasn't enough space. Like there was really the main floor, which was probably about 700 square feet or less, but that was all of their living space. That was living room, dining room, kitchen, two bedrooms and a bathroom. So it was your typical bungalow, which don't get me wrong, it's very cute. Internet, you can have that bungalow, it's adorable. But for this couple, it didn't work. They love their neighborhood and a lot of houses on their street have added on top just because people need more space. So then I got involved pretty early on. We rejigged some of the interior space planning and then we added two stories on top. So the main floor is the same. This is the same, but reconfigured totally. When you enter the house, we wanted to create a foyer and it wasn't gonna be huge, but we wanted to make sure there's enough storage. So there's a full bank of millwork, which gives you lots of shoe and coat storage. We have pullouts in there and also a shelf to put keys and stuff like that. We also wanted a mirror, cause I think it's always very important. And we also wanted a little kind of perchy bench to put shoes on. So at the front of the house, we had this smaller room that we wanted to create a formal sitting room. The clients like to have you know, quiet time and read and play records. There's a record player in here. So really the idea was that this was a separate quieter room to the great room at the back of the house. My clients were not necessarily committed to having a fireplace, but I felt like it was pretty important for a house of this size to have a fireplace. So we went with this limestone fireplace from Trumeau Stones who are amazing. I feel like it adds so much to the living room and really creates a focal point and makes it feel cozy. And especially like in the winter, curling up on the sofa and reading a book in front of the fireplace, that really makes the space. The kitchen. So the original kitchen was like a tiny nook that had like a little peninsula and was very small. It was basically a one person kitchen, but we really wanted this to be a much grander kitchen and we wanted it to have much more storage and be more open to the living space because what was really lacking in their old house was when you were in the kitchen, you could only really see into the dining room. You couldn't see the living room at all. So we started with the idea there of wood cabinetry, which I feel like really adds a lot of warmth and also the idea of all the appliances being hidden. So the fridge is paneled in an open concept area. It's nice when the kitchen isn't so kitchen. I feel like there's a phase where we were really into like everything being super industrial. We've moved beyond that. And then we thought a lot about this island being the bridge between the kitchen and the family room and the dining room. So we introduced another color there. So it's like a smoky greenish color. Pigeon, my fair ball, which I got mildly obsessed with. Um, but that idea was to separate the kitchen from the other areas, but also for it to be a soft transition. Often the island's really dark and we wanted to overall keep it quite soft and the darker elements are on the perimeter. The hood is like a burnished brass, so it's like a dark metal, but when you look closely, it has this beautiful texture. And then on either side of the range, we did upper cabinets that have a black frame and fluted glass and a white interior, which again, mixed up the material. So we actually have quite a lot of finishes in the kitchen. There's a lot of different things going on, but overall it doesn't feel busy. It still feels seamless and everything is really nicely integrated. And I think that that also makes it feel less kitcheny where you're not just looking at all this like, you know, slew of cabinets that are all the same. I mean, it's shocking. It's shocking to me, but guys, I can do a house without a banquette. It didn't make sense here, but we have a huge dining table. We have like a eight foot dining table. There's lots of space there. And the clients still have three stools at the island, but most of the time they eat at the dining table. I love it when people use their dining rooms all the time because I feel like none of us, at least I don't, live in a house big enough to have a dining room that I don't use every day. So I love it when in an area like this, we can integrate the dining room into the kitchen great room area so that every meal can be eaten at the dining room so it doesn't become this waste of space. Because the kitchen is really grounded in all the millwork and then the family room is really grounded in the TV millwork, I thought a lot about how we could make the dining room have its own special presence, which is how we came up with the mural idea. So we introduced this mural at the end of the dining table to define that space as separate. Well, really back there it was big TV, comfy lounge space, toy storage. So we built that millwork that has also closed uppers because these guys have a lot of messy storage and they were like, we're not super tidy open shelf people. So we wanted to come up with a way to still have the look of the full height built in without the clutteriness of the shelves. So we just have one open shelf above the TV and then the sides are closed storage so you can be messier in there and put junkier stuff. In this house, there are multiple wood tones 
which is another thing that I think really makes spaces feel warm and less um, stuffy. I feel like people can get fixated on wood matching wood matching wood, but I really feel like you can have three wood tones in a space that can be working really nicely together. I think it matters what their undertones are as opposed to them being different colors of wood. I love teal. I have like a deep weakness for teal. It's always just a color I really gravitate to. And I found that tile, which I thought was so pretty. And then it introduced the idea of laying it brick pattern and then introducing a soldier course. And I thought it just added really an interest to that wall. And then we just painted out the rest of the powder room in that same deep teal color. And it was one of those things I presented it and that room is exactly from my board to what we built. They really wanted a principal bedroom that was gonna be you know, spacious, but also not this like big waste of space because most people that I know don't hang out in the bedroom. I know sometimes you see like a big sitting room in a bedroom when we talked about that, but they were like, we would never use that. So instead we chose king bed and it has beautiful drapery and a lovely view to the backyard, which is so nice and a great walk-in closet, but we didn't add a bunch of extra stuff back there because it wasn't necessary. It's not an enormous room, but we got all of the things that I wanted in an ensuite. Number one, water closet. Every marriage should have a toilet in a separate room. You know, I don't have that. I keep being like, it's been a good run. You know, we've had a good run. Um, love you, Tim. I feel like even in a smaller bathroom, it's amazing when you can have a water closet in a separate room because it just means that both people can be using the bathroom without it getting cramped. And then we have a big shower. There's quite a large window and we went with bottom up blinds so that they could have privacy while in the tub, but still be looking at the treetops. There's a family bath at the top of the stairs, which is like your main second floor bathroom. And because it was mainly gonna be for their daughter, we wanted it to be a little bit fun. So we picked this floor tile that has this kind of organic looking blue blob. And then everything else is pretty simple in there. We brought white oak into the vanity because it looks really pretty with the blue and really accessorized it to be more fun for her. There's like a print of a carnival in there. What I love about it is it feels fun and playful, but it also doesn't feel childlike. So even as a teenager or as an adult, it's still a lovely bathroom, but it does have like a little bit of a playful feel for her now. And I remember at one point I sent a whole thing of all these different wallpapers and then I think Evan got involved and she picked that this is the one she liked the best. And it's very vibrant and so adorable. And it really makes that room really special. Both of their parents live out of town, so they wanted somewhere that their parents could come and stay with them to feel comfortable and have their own space. So we have a bathroom, which is great, works perfectly for them. And then we have a guest room that has two twin beds because oftentimes older people like to sleep in separate beds, which is wonderful. And then we also have a lounge that has a pull-out couch. So there's extra sleeping in there if there was someone else but it also acts as like another family room, TV room. So there's lots of people in the house. You have a separate space to hang out. And they also have a little kitchenette in the lounge. Except you have to take the stairs. Huh? Except you have to take the stairs. Yeah, they're fit. They're really fit, older people. And you know what? It's important to them to get their steps in. I'm so happy with how it turned out. And most importantly, the clients are really happy. Every time I talk to them, they say how happy they are with the house and how thrilled they were with the whole process. And really, I feel like their trust in us resulted in a really fantastic end product. As much as we were listening to their feedback, we were really able to be creative and propose things to them that maybe we wouldn't have suggested if they weren't so open to our ideas.